Hello friends, this is Durga again from ITVersity, a one-stop shop to learn all the technologies. At this time, we are talking about HDP Certified Administrator or HDP CA exam. So far, we have covered installation, configuration and troubleshooting uh, and now we are talking about high availability. If you go through the syllabus, the high availability is primarily on the masters such as name node resource manager and then uh, data itself uh, so that we, we can have a copy of data um, in case of uh, cluster failures and also they are talking about Hive Server 2 high availability or Hive Server high availability. But they are not talking about data nodes or resource managers because um, it is taken care by replication factor. If you, uh, if you can recollect um, a file of 1 GB um, with a block size 128 MB will be uh, distributed on multiple nodes uh, uh, using 8 blocks because the block size is 128 MB so 1 GB file will be divided into uh, 8 and uh, those, uh, those 8 blocks will be physically stored on multiple nodes in the cluster if you have replication factor greater than 1 uh, by default 3 each block will have 3 copies and uh, and those three copies will be there on three different data nodes. So even if one or two data nodes are down or in a very large cluster where rack awareness is configured, even if one third of the data nodes are down, as the data will be distributed and will have copies at the block level, you don't need to worry about uh, data node failures at all. It is, uh, it is inbuilt from version one. Uh, uh, so data node high availability is inbuilt from version 1 and that's why it is not uh, um, that important when we talk about high availability because it is there from the day 1. So when it comes to name node, for example in our cluster, if you go to the HDFS, we have a name node, we have a secondary name node and we have three data nodes. So even if one data node goes down in this cluster, as long as replication factor is greater than 1, um, my cluster will be up and running without any issues. Uh, but if the name node goes down, so what is the name node? Name node is nothing but a in-memory component. Okay, And uh, what does it contain? It contains the details about the files. Um, so file will be divided into blocks. So for example, if you go to uh, name node uh, user interface. I'm just recollecting uh, what name node is. And if you go to utilities and browse the file system, so uh, user, not this one, uh, user ec2 hyphen user, and you can see that there are many files in this. Okay. So let me let me see if there are any large files. Yeah, here. So there is a file of size 1 GB, block size 128 MB, and replication factor 3. And if I open this uh, block, um, this file, you can see there are nine blocks because it's approximately 1 GB. Uh, so the block ID starts. Uh, uh, the block ID for this file starts from 0 through 8, which means nine blocks. And this is the actual block ID in HDFS, which is unique across the cluster. And uh, the block 0, which is one of the blocks of our 1GB file, have three copies. Okay, So this is called as uh, um, metadata of file. On top of this, you have permissions and all those things also. And this have to be stored somewhere. And that is, where, that is what name node is. So name node contains this in memory. Okay. And uh, if the name node goes down, uh, at the time of explaining about HDFS, I have covered this. If the name node goes down, we have to uh, we have to recover and restore this in-memory metadata using FS image and edit logs. 
so fs image and edit logs will be will be stored uh, at this location hadoop hdfs name node uh, on uh, on the node where name node is running so in my environment name node is running on sorry i should use let me connect to my cluster so in in my case name node is running on this location this host 38 so i am connecting to 38 and once connected you can go to this location hadoop hdfs name node and hit enter and then find dot so you can see there are set of files which start with fs image and a set of files which starts with edits which is nothing but edit logs so this fs image and edit logs can be used to, rest to restore and recover um, the name node okay so um, yeah, your name node will be up and running using those but it will take time in a very large cluster it can take up to two hours uh, which means that until the name node comes up you have to wait no application can run no data can be saved in hdfs which is not good for the uh, project uh, um, not good for the Hado uh, applications that are running on the hadoop cluster and hence uh, there will be a lot of pressure uh, um, on the team so name node can go down because it's uh, just another you will have another physical server with ram uh, hard disks uh, uh, file systems can be full motherboard can say uh, there can be some issue on the motherboard so for several reasons name node can go down and if it is taking two hours whenever it goes down or even more time then it is not good so that's where the availability of the name node comes into picture okay so uh, here if you want to understand uh, the steps of configuring name node high availability you can click on this link and i will also cover all the relevant topics okay so first we will understand the architecture of the name node sorry uh, architecture of the uh, name node high availability so in case of name node uh, uh, in case of typical configuration from version 1 when we go with hdfs we will have a name node we will have secondary name node and data nodes name node is the one which contains the metadata of our files in hdfs secondary name node is the helper which merges edit logs into fs image at regular intervals uh, so in case of high availability configuration you don't see secondary name node instead you will see both as name nodes itself but one will be active and one will be standby okay so the terms will change you will start seeing active name node and standby name node you will not see name node and secondary name node anymore so what will happen is whenever uh, um, whenever if uh, uh, files are added uh, to the hdfs cluster the blocks uh, the file will be divided into blocks and those blocks will be stored on the data nodes in the cluster right and uh, um, the details the, uh, the details such as block reports will be sent to uh, will be sent to both active and um, active and standby name node uh, blo block reports are nothing but each data node uh, will send heartbeat uh, to, to the name node al along with uh, it will also send the block level information each data node contains so those that information about the block reports will be sent to both active and passive configuration uh, active and passive or standby name node but when you add a new file to the hdfs um, the writes will be written to only the active name node uh, because uh, uh, standby name node will be in the read only mode you will understand that once we configure but for now just remember that whenever new files are added to the cluster then the metadata related to those new files will be written to the 
to only the active name node okay and then uh, active name node will write that metadata to something called journal nodes so journal nodes are the ones which uh, which will add now they are nothing but a software process and um, you can have it on any server typically in a very large cluster wherever we have uh, zookeeper we will create the journal nodes we need to have at least three of them uh, and uh, name node will start writing uh, uh, writing the changes to it to at least uh, majority of the journal nodes when i say majority of the journal nodes if you have three journal nodes it will try to write to two if you have five journal nodes it will try to write to three and it is very important that you have uh, odd number of journal nodes so so that uh, uh, it can take care of split brain scenario okay so name node has to write to majority of the journal nodes not just one journal node if you have three journal nodes name node has to write the changes that are happening to its metadata uh, onto uh, at least two out of three if it is five it has to write to uh, three uh, so that the write is considered to be successful and then um, uh, journal nodes will apply uh, uh, sorry name node the standby name node will read those changes that are written to journal node whenever a file is added and will apply to the standby name node so instead of creating fs image which is and edit log um, at regular intervals um, the this configuration will keep on applying the changes that are happening on the active name node onto the standby name node that's the major difference in case of earlier configuration where you have name node and standby name node you have fs image and edit log every one hour or every uh, 1 million transactions in name node by default the secondary name node will try to create the fs image and whenever you have to recover the uh, name node if it if it uh, crashes then you have to first restore the latest fs image and apply the edit logs on top of it which is a tedious process so instead of creating uh, the snapshot for the restore and then edit uh, another set of files such as edit logs to recover in the active passive configuration uh, the name node um, will try to write its metadata into the journal nodes and the uh, uh, standby name node will try to read the metadata the changes that are happening to metadata uh, from the journal nodes and keep on applying to it so hardly the standby name node uh, will always be a few seconds or a couple of minutes uh, behind it will not be one hour or one million transactions behind as in the typical configuration of name node and secondary name node here uh, the latency between the active and standby name node will be at max two minutes on a very large cluster okay the reason is uh, the journal nodes okay now let us configure the high availability what you have to do is you have to uh, means if you are using ambari uh, if you have to do it manually it will be very tedious process so uh, if you are using uh, um, if you are using uh, the tools such as Hortonworks Ambari or Cloudera Manager, you can click on this uh, uh, service and um, uh, you can use the web interfaces themselves to actually configure the high availability. In this case, if you want to uh, add high availability in, uh, using Ambari, click on HDFS, go to service actions and click on enable name node HA okay you have to give the uh, name service so i am giving it as hdpns name service for it and uh, i have to have uh, uh, two name nodes one for the active one for standby so we we already have name node on 38 and uh, i want to configure 39 where i I think uh, let me see let me confirm where my secondary name node is earlier and then based on that I will make the selection 
typically you will be converting your secondary name node to standby name node okay my secondary name node is on 39 so go back to ambari choose hdfs click on service action enable name node high availability give the name hdpns in this case so um, my i want to convert my secondary name node to standby name node typically you will have um, uh, two different nodes for active uh, and pa passive or uh, for even for the typical configuration for name node and secondary name node you will not be sharing resources the way i am doing but as we don't have many nodes in the cluster we will be sharing the same set of physical servers to deploy several software process in this case secondary name node or passive name node is also a software process and we are using 38 only for name node and then zookeeper server and then uh, we will configure journal node in a moment on right uh, amount of servers but typical production cluster you will have only name node running on the on one physical server similarly another name node on another physical server you will not be having these many other software services okay so right now i have configured current name node and additional name node with will be used for active passive configuration and journal nodes i want to set up on 37 38 39 um, because these are considered as masters in my six node cluster on a large cluster these three will be uh, will be with the zookeeper servers wherever zookeeper servers are running typically we will have uh, we will have uh, uh, journal nodes on them in this case one of my zookeeper server is running on 40 so let me choose this to 40 so that my zookeeper and journal nodes uh, runs on the same set of servers it is not mandatory but i am configuring in, uh, in in that manner and then you need to have a, a general edits, edits directory earlier we have uh, name node directory secondary name node directory and data node directory if you go to if you go to the cluster again okay i cannot uh, uh, check when i am running this so let's ignore that so similar to general node edits directory when configuring uh, a hdfs in typical configuration we will have name node uh, directory secondary name node directory and data node directories data node directories contain the data name node and secondary name node directories contain the fs image and edit log in this case uh, we have general node edits directory where the uh, the metadata that are uh, the metadata changes that are happening on the primary name node will be written to uh, the majority of the journal nodes this is the location okay and then scroll down you can review these uh, several parameters uh, earlier the fs dot default fs used to have the name node ip address uh, so if the name node goes down and if you want to uh, because of uh, major hardware failures such as motherboard you have to get a new node and you have to uh, restore and recover the uh, you have to get a new server and you have to restore and recover the name node on that new server and if the ip address is different from the name node that has crashed you have to change the ip address for uh, fs.default fs uh, pointing to that node and you have to deploy and the configuration files on all the nodes in the cluster here we will not have the hard-coded ip addresses under fs.defaultfs instead we will have the name node uh, namespace 
sorry, sorry. Instead, we will have the namespace, and that namespace will have um, the IP addresses that are support uh, that uh, IP addresses that will be supporting uh, the high availability configuration. In this case, you can see HDPNS here, and then uh, we are giving names to each node. So uh, internally, it is saying that there are two nodes with name nn1 and nn2 and then somewhere here you can see that rpc address for nn1 is this one uh, one node ip address column 8020 port number and this is the second one okay so so it starts with uh, uh, the namespace name at the default fs and then uh, it will uh, uh, it will uh, it will give names to the nodes nn1 and nn2 and uh, using those nn1 and nn2 you will see set of parameters which will be pointing to the uh, right servers in the cluster okay so this is for the uh, ip address resolution between active and passive uh, name nodes in case the failure happens so if one node fails then the other node will become active and uh, everything will be accessible without any impact using uh, the namespace name and the namespace will be resolving into the active name node ip address okay that's why they have hidden the ip addresses uh, of our uh, um, name nodes using the namespace okay so click on next and now you have to take care of these actions very carefully first you have to log into the name node host so the host ip address is this one and i have already logged in okay once that is done you have to run this command so what it will do is it will put the name node in safe mode because uh, we have to um, we have to rebuild the secondary name node uh, sorry passive name node by copying the current snapshot this is a one time activity we will not be doing uh, it regularly uh, and uh, Config, um, enabling the name node high availability has to be done in the downtime so your Hadoop cluster might be inaccessible uh, while doing this so you have to uh, get the red zone and uh, start configuring the high availability so run these commands so first thing is it is entering into the safe mode which means that uh, the name node is uh, the name node will be in the read only mode I think here I have to use HDFS as the username because HDFS is a super user uh, for our Hadoop cluster. We have to use HDFS. I don't know why it is showing it as zero here. It should have used the username directly. And now I, we are trying to save the namespace. So namespace. Is, so we are actually trying to create the snapshot uh, on our active name node. Uh, on our active name node. So whatever is there in memory uh, will be created as a namespace here. And then you will be able to proceed once Ambar detects that the name node is in safe mode and the checkpoint has been created successfully. Okay. So once that is done, click on next. Now it is stopping all services. Uh, we then it will install the additional node, and then it will install the journal nodes. It will reconfigure the HDFS. It will start the journal nodes. It will disable the secondary name node because active passive configuration and uh, name node secondary name node configuration are mutually exclusive. You cannot have both. Okay. So. With high availability, we will be having active passive name nodes, not the secondary name node. It is hence it is disabling the secondary name node here. So it will take a while. So now everything is done. Click on next. 
and then we have to run this command on the name node host hit enter okay it seems there is some name node is not formatted okay i think this we have to run it on the okay there is some issue okay this has to be done on the name node which is 38 so i am in the wrong host that's why it failed now run this one okay now it is done click on next so now it is starting the zookeeper servers first and then it will start the name node click on next and then you have to finish these tasks on both the nodes first on 38 second on 39 so on 38 we are initializing automatic failover okay so copy this one on the active node or the name node run this one and on the passive node we have to run this one okay exit and log into the 39 and run this command okay It will take a moment and then we can click on next yes click on next make sure that there were no failures when you run those commands click on ok now it is starting the additional node installing the failover controllers we will review what is the purpose of failover controllers and all those things and then it is starting the failover controllers it will delete the secondary name node and then it will start all the services again it will take a while and then we will review so now all the services are started successfully click on done and uh, you can see that uh, um, the high availability is enabled on my six node cluster okay so after configuring it you have to go through a validation exercise which is tedious and i will show uh, in another video and also I will review all the components that are involved um, as part of the configuration of the um, uh, high availability in the next video. That being said, I hope you are enjoying the content on the channel. If you like this video, please click on the like button. If you want to provide the feedback, please use the comment section of the video. If you want to discuss further about certifications or big data, please join my LinkedIn groups called ITVersity uh, certifications or ITVersity big data. And finally, if you are not subscribed to my channel yet, Please do so. You will get to see a lot more content like this over time. Thank you. Bye.